Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian and today we're going to be going over this FJ Dynamics MP500 lithium ion portable power station. So this power station is rated to run up to 500 watts continuously off of the pure sine inverter and it is packed with 519 watt hours worth of lithium ion NMC batteries inside it. But let's scoot in just a little bit closer and I will show you all the ports on the front, what you're going to get, and then we'll just hop right into all the testing that I did and hopefully help you make an educated decision if this is something that you're thinking about. So, so over here on the left hand side you're going to get two 5525 barrel ports that's rated up to 14 volts or 8 amps. Then you've got your standard 14 volt 8 amp cigarette style output. For your USBs, you're going to have three quick charge 3.0 ports as well as a power delivery 60 watt output port. And then on your AC side, you got two AC receptacles that's rated up to 500 watts that's going to put out clean pure sine energy. And then for your input, you're going to get your Anderson connectors that's able to accept up to 12 to 26 volts worth of solar panels or 100 watts max as well as your DC input for your AC wall charger. You're going to get around 100 to 103 watts worth of input. So that means with either solar or AC wall charging, it's going to take this unit about five hours to charge up from zero to 100%. So that's the overview of this power station. So now let's get into the testing that I did on it. This is a 500 watt rated power station. So to test that, I've got my little 500 watt space heater over here on the side. We're going to power on the unit and we're going to turn on the AC inverter to make sure that it can power this. So to do that, press this AC button and you can see the wattage slowly start to creep up. We're at 300, 320, 350. The fans have kicked on on the power station. 550 watts, 560, and it cut off. So this is a 500 watt space heater. However, to get the coils heated up, it has to get to around 600 to 650 watts. And with this rated at a 500 watt inverter, it takes too long for this heater to heat up over 500 watts, so it cuts off. So this power station does what it's supposed to do. It's not rated at over 500 watts. Okay, so I've got five incandescent 75 watt bulbs to try out now, hoping to get around 500 or so watts. So let's go ahead and plug those in. And that gets us to around 400, 412 watts. 405 watts. Let's check the voltage on this. And we're getting pretty much right at 110 volts, 109.9, which is a 110 volt rated power supply. And that's actually really good in my opinion, because this is rated at 110 volts and this is pulling almost the max capacity at 410 watts. Let's check the sine wave. And we got ourselves a perfectly clean sine wave. All right, so I got the heater warmed up now. We're pulling 455 watts. So let's make sure this thing will run at almost full capacity for at least five minutes. So we are just reaching the five minute mark. We just passed it. We are still powering 480 watts to that space heater. So this runs the pretty much the max capacity that this is rated for, for at least five minutes. Now to see how loud the fans are, because the fans are running at max rate right now. So I'm about three feet away and with the fans going at max rate, we're getting about 50 decibels. So while this is comfortably running around 410 watts off the AC side, I'm going to set my Bouge RV power station on top and I wanna see if this will output 60 watts and charge this power station while the AC is running. So we're gonna connect the power delivery 60 watt output Yes, and you can see the USB is actually showing that we are outputting 60 watts, and my Bouge RV kind of confirms that, but it tells me that I'm inputting 64 watts. So we're about five watts difference, and that's just probably due to conversion loss, but you can output 60 watts via USB-C while maintaining AC outputage as well. All right, so the cigarette style 12 volt socket is rated at 14 volts or eight amps. So I've got my tester here, so we're gonna make sure that we can pull at least eight amps out of this socket. So turn on the DC circuit and let's push this thing up to 8 amps. All right, we're pulling 130 watts, 8.3 amps. And let's see where this thing cuts off. 9 amps. So it cut off right at around 9.5 amps. So you will for sure be able to get at least the rated 8 amps off of this thing. 
And to test the actual usable capacity that you're gonna get out of this battery, I did a DC discharge test. So I charged this guy up all the way to 100%. I hooked up my DC capacity tester and I let it run until the battery was depleted. At the end of the test, I was able to get 435 watt hours pulled out of this battery, which equates to around 85% efficient. So to test out multiple circuits and to make sure that the AC and the DC side of this power station works concurrently, I've got my fan plugged up to the AC inverter. It is on. I'm going to turn on the USB. I've got a couple of lights plugged in. Those are working. I'm going to try out the wireless charging pad so my phone is off. And it does detect that it is charging now. And I'm going to plug up the actual AC charger to make sure that it does support pass-through charging. We got the charger plugged in. And we are now inputting 103 watts, outputting 11 watts on the USB, and this little fan only takes about seven to 10 watts off the AC, but right now it's running seven watts. So all circuits are working properly, including the wireless charging pad up top. So to check to make sure that this power station does not have some type of DC cutoff built into the BMS, I wanna make sure that it runs this 12 volt compressor cooler for at least eight hours. I choose eight hours because that's about the time that most of us sleep through the night and we want our coolers to remain on and running throughout the night so our food or drinks don't spoil. So I've got this cooler connected to the cigarette style output. I'm going to set the cooler to around 40 degrees so the compressor doesn't have to run continuously. So we've got the cooler set at 40 degrees, Right now we're pulling 42 watts because the compressor just kicked on, but I'm gonna come back and check in in eight hours. And currently, right now, it is 9.12 a.m. Well, we've actually gone past eight hours. It is now 7.30 p.m. The cooler's still on. The DC is still running the cooler. So I can tell you that at least between eight and nine hours, this power station does not have a DC cutoff function, which is great because that means that you can keep a cooler running all night long while you sleep and not worry about this power station shutting down. And to wrap up the testing, the last thing I wanted to check was the AC inverter and its efficiency and if it has a cutoff as well. So this unit is powered up to 100%. I will zoom in to show you because this screen is hard to see on camera, but we are charged at 100%. I'm going to turn on the AC inverter and you can tell that by the green light. And I'm going to let this sit hopefully for at least eight hours to make sure that one, it doesn't cut off and two, how much power does this inverter use with no load? So we are sitting at 7.07 .07 a.m. and I'm just gonna let this inverter run. All right, so it is 11.49 now and you can tell the AC inverter is off. In the directions, it states that this device will actually shut down after three hours if it is less than a five watt draw continuous on it. So I'm assuming that's what happened here, but it says to wake it up to press any button. So let's see what happens when we press power. And the battery meter is still showing 100. Let's turn on the AC inverter again. So the best thing that I can tell on this inverter is that you have to have some type of light draw continuously being pulled from it in order for the inverter to stay on and not go into hibernation mode. But yeah, so just know that this inverter will not stay on indefinitely. Okay, so that wraps up all of the testing, and as you can see, it did perform very well. The one test that I was kind of iffy about was the parasitic drain test off of the inverter. And I'm not going to give this thing a knock because we don't really need an AC inverter running non-stop if there's no load on it, and that is built in to protect it. So I can't tell you what the parasitic drain is because after three hours when I came back to check, the battery was still showing 100%. So I don't really know what the result of that is, to be honest with you, but I can tell you that the AC inverter will cut off if it does not have at least a five watt load on it after three hours. The good thing is that the DC function of this power station does not cut off and it will run a cooler overnight for at least nine hours according to my test. So all in, this power station performed pretty well in all of my tests. The 85% efficiency rating is about industry average for all of the power stations out there. I've seen much worse and I've seen better, but 85% is pretty much the middle of the road. Not great, not bad. I do love the fold flat handle. I think that's great. I wish all power stations would start to implement this. I just can't stand some of these power station companies that put those big handles on top. I, you think they would start listening, but 
Oh well. The wireless charging pad up top is great. I, I love being able to just set my phone on top and it starts to charge because that means that it eliminates a cord that I have to carry and it doesn't take up another USB port for something else that I can be using it for. <laughs> and I actually like the light on this one too. It's a very easy one button on, one button off. The temperature of this light is nice. It's not cool blue and it's not yellow. It's just kind of right in the middle. So it is a nice light at night if you need it. And the inverter on this thing was performed great. It ran 500 watts continuously for, for over five minutes. And on power stations this small, I don't recommend running it to the max because you're just gonna deplete the battery so fast and it is hard on the batteries. But this was a strong performer at 500 watts, which is what it's rated for. It cut off at 560 watts, and that's a good thing because the BMS protected itself and shut this unit down when it got too high. So there are the pros, and there are some cons on this. The number one con being the price. At $499, you're essentially looking at $1 per watt hour. That's pretty high compared to all of the other power stations on the market right now, especially the fact that this is lithium ion and not LiPo there's again pros and cons to both of the battery chemistries, but typically the more expensive units are going to be your LiPo 4 units. The information display is a little tricky to see. It's kind of like the old Jackery screens, and it does not have a runtime to empty. I do like having those on my power station so I can quickly glance at it and say, okay, I got four more hours left to run this appliance until I have to recharge it. I wish it had a runtime to empty on this unit, but it does not. So those are really my only two or three biggest gripes that I have on this power station. Everything else on on it did really well. If they would lower that price just a little bit, I think this would be a good option for anyone in the three to 500 watt range power station because it kind of checks off a lot of boxes for things that I look for in a power station. But if you are interested in this and you're wondering what it comes with, of course it's going to come with your AC wall charging brick. So yes, unfortunately you still do have a brick, but again, you're gonna get around 100 to 103 watts off of the AC brick. You're gonna get a DC 27909 charger to hook this thing up to your car or your RV or your van, a 7909 to MC4 solar panel connection. So again, 12 to 26 volts worth of solar at around 100 watts max. So you've got multiple recharge options as well. So again, overall, it's a pretty good unit. Just lower that price a little bit. And I think this would, this would be a good option if you are in the market for an NMC battery station. Folks, I hope you found that informative on this little power station. But if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll get back with you. But other than that, folks, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Take care.